Maintaining a clean home is obviously important to you. In order to clean your home thoroughly, you need powerful suction and good filtration. You can feel Kirby's powerful suction, but what about its filtration? Let's hear what independent experts say about Kirby's filtration. Someone once said that if you really wanted to uh, keep the air as dirty as possible is to use a traditional vacuum cleaner. I'm Dr. Joseph A. Belanti. I'm professor of pediatrics and microbiology immunology at Georgetown University School of Medicine. We now recognize that in dust there is not only particles of dirt, but there are particles of animal parts uh, such as mites, there's mold, uh, there's cockroach antigen, uh, and, and many other microorganisms. Those particles are around 5 to 10 microns. If we examine the older vacuum cleaners uh, with grandmother vacuuming the carpets, she'd go over the same spot 100 times. And all she was doing was suctioning air into the vacuum cleaner and out the other end. Now here at Georgetown, we've taken this matter very seriously. We went to a number of houses and hotels and actually vacuumed carpets, bedding, mattresses, and measured the amount of mite antigen in dust specimens before and after. The type of filtration that we were using is the new electrostatic uh, method of filtration. Before vacuuming, you have a very heavy strip here indicating that there is considerable mite antigen. After vacuuming, there is very little. Test after test show this same pattern of reduction. This is very, very serious business. And I think that we just need to take it in a positive way and say that the technology has moved and we ought to move with the technology. There's a whole range of performance for vacuum cleaners just like any other product. Vacuum cleaners that only make dust storms in your home all the way to vacuum cleaners that do a very beautiful job. I'm Susan Goldsmith, Director of Technical Services for IVR. As you can see, we have a vacuum cleaner in our test chamber at this time. It's a Kirby upright. And as you can see, it's upside down. What we do is we take test dust and we inject it into an uh, air that's going down. If you look at this, this is pretty typical. We have many particles here going into the vacuum cleaner and we have no particles or zero particles coming out of the vacuum cleaner because it's done exactly what it's supposed to do is taken dusty air and made it clean. Now it's time to learn how to get the most out of your G6. Congratulations! You're now the smart owner of a Kirby G6, the latest in a line of innovation that goes back to when electricity was barely an idea. Your new G6 is more than a great alternative to the common vacuum cleaner. It's a complete home care system far more versatile than any vacuum. Also more durable because it's metal, not plastic. So you'll save money over the years. Your G6 is also simple to operate, so you'll save time using it. And with its powerful airflow, combined with the Micron Magic Filtration System, your Kirby does the job right. There's nothing like your G6 because there's no company like Kirby. For over 80 years, Kirby has provided customers like you with complete satisfaction. We constantly evaluate every design detail and improvement. We carefully assemble every product by hand. We test every piece and part, using everything from the latest quality automation to good old-fashioned workouts. We also support every Kirby with one of the best warranties in the business. If you ever have questions, your local Kirby distributor is just a phone call away. And for U.S. or Canadian customers, there's a toll-free customer service number. This video will answer most of the questions any new G6 owner might have. You can also use it later to review specific procedures. 
and also be sure to refer to your G6 use and care booklet. Now sit back and learn how to get the most out of your complete home care system. Because the more you learn about your G6, the more you'll enjoy how it works for you. The Kirby G6, one of the most complete, advanced, easy to use home maintenance systems available today. A product for those who appreciate quality, reliability, and performance. This video owner's manual will help you take advantage of the G6's many features and has been divided into sections for easy reference. Part one is called Getting Started. This section will familiarize you with a few basic G6 features. Part two will show you how to use your Kirby as an upright and as a portable cleaner. Part three will help you set up your G6 as a canister cleaner and show you how to use its wide range of attachments. Part four will discuss the various optional accessories which complement and add value to the G6. Part five will provide you with some handy operating and maintenance tips. To get the most out of this video owner's manual, view the entire tape first. Then, when you need a refresher, you can search through the tape to find the specific section or item you'd like to review. Please note this video is not intended to replace your G6 owner's manual. It can help get you started, but if you need more information, consult the owner's manual included with your G6. This section, Getting Started, covers general information you'll need to begin using your G6, including moving and carrying your G6, using the handle tilt latch, using the toe touch control, adjusting for proper power nozzle height, using tech drive power assist, installing or changing disposable filter bags, emptying the mini emptor, and understanding the belt lifter. Your G6 is equipped with tech drive. This variable power assist actually senses the speed and direction of the G6 and provides up to 90% of the power required to move it back and forth. To engage tech drive, push down the yellow D side of the tech drive pedal. Tech drive must be turned off in order to push your G6 when the motor is not running. To do this, raise the nozzle and push down on the gray N side of the power assist pedal. The N stands for neutral. Turn the power off. Then unplug the Kirby. Now you should be able to push the G6 freely. You can pick up the G6 by the handy carrying grip located at the base of the handle to carry the G6 to another area. Your Kirby G6 also has a convenient handle tilt latch which allows you to lift the front of the Kirby over door thresholds or throw rugs. To do so, push the handle tilt latch toward the bag. Then pull back on the handle until the front of the Kirby lifts up. The tilt latch will also allow you to store your Kirby in a vertical position. Lower the handle all the way down and move the tilt latch away from the bag. You can now stand the Kirby up on its bumper for storage. When you're ready to use the Kirby again, you'll want to unlock the handle tilt latch. However, never unlock the handle tilt latch without holding on to the handle. The handle is spring-loaded and could fly up when unlatched. It's important to adjust the power nozzle to its proper operating height. Make sure the power nozzle is up by stepping on the toe touch control bottom pedal. Turn the Kirby on. Then step on the upper pedal, lowering the power nozzle one notch at a time until you hear a change in the tone of the motor. This means your Kirby has sealed to the carpet. Then press the toe touch control upper pedal one more time and your power nozzle will be at the proper height. A disposable filter bag is required for proper operation of your G6. Before installing or changing a disposable filter bag, unplug the power cord from the wall outlet and make sure the motor and fan have stopped. Then unzip the outer bag and pull out the top adapter and disposable filter bag. Always replace the disposable filter bag when dirt reaches the full line. Failure to do so will affect performance. Hold the top adapter steady 
while you turn the disposable filter bag's cardboard faceplate. To install a new filter bag, align the slots in the cardboard faceplate with the lock tabs on the adapter. Then push the adapter into the bag opening and rotate the cardboard faceplate right or clockwise to secure the filter bag. The bag support strap should be attached to the top adapter. This is required for proper operation of the disposable filter bag. If it's not attached, thread the strap through the small hole of the top adapter. Then place the hole in the strap over the stud on the adapter. Finally, insert the bag adapter and new filter bag into the outer permanent bag and close the zipper. To purchase replacement disposable filter bags, contact your local Kirby distributor. Or if distance or convenience is a factor, call Kirby Direct at 1-800-437-7170. The Mini Emptor is designed to collect large heavy particles, which can be emptied by removing the Mini Emptor. To remove, grasp the Mini Emptor underneath by its handhold and rotate it away from the body of the Kirby as far as it will go. Then lift it off. The top of the bag is released from the handle by pressing the bag release button. Position the front opening over a newspaper and shake it to remove the particles. Though your Kirby G6 can remove larger debris from your floors, never pick up heavy objects such as coins, screws, large rocks, or similar objects. It may cause damage to your Kirby. Reattach the bag assembly. Then line up the raised indicator line on the mini emptor with the indicator line on the air exhaust port. Rotate the mini emptor toward the Kirby and lock it in place. The mini emptor must be securely locked into place or the Kirby will not operate. The belt lifter on your G6 serves two purposes. The first use is to engage or disengage the brush roll. The second use is to allow removal of the power nozzle when converting your Kirby for use with various attachments and optional accessories. To disengage the belt and prevent the brush roll from rotating, Make sure the power nozzle is raised to its highest setting. Make sure the G6 is unplugged. Raise the headlight hood. Flip out the L-shaped handle on the belt lifter. Use it to turn the belt lifter to the left or counterclockwise until it stops and the red arrows line up. Return the L-shaped handle to its closed position. Lower the headlight hood and your Kirby is ready for use as a straight suction cleaner. To re-engage the belt so the brush roll rotates, turn the belt lifter to the right or clockwise until the green arrows line up and lower the headlight hood. The brush roll will now rotate when the power switch is turned on. Your Kirby G6 is also equipped with an innovative brush roll indicator light. It is located on the top of the power nozzle. When the brush roll is operating properly, the light will shine continuously. If the brush roll indicator light flickers or does not come on when using the power nozzle, the brush roll is not working properly. Either the belt is not engaged or it may need replaced. Replacing the belt will be covered in Section 5, Operating and Maintenance Tips. Your Kirby G6 is an extremely versatile home care system. In part two, we'll cover using your G6 as an upright cleaner, using your upright as a straight suction cleaner, cleaning hard surface floors, using your G6 as a portable cleaner, and using your G6 to clean carpeted stairs and mattresses. Before you begin cleaning with your new G6, it's important to have the power nozzle adjusted to the proper height setting. This gives you the most efficient cleaning action and lengthens belt life. Straight suction cleaning allows you to vacuum hard floors, throw rugs, and delicate carpets without use of the brush roll. When using the G6 on any hard surface flooring, make sure tech drive is in neutral. With the Kirby off, turn the belt lifter left or counterclockwise until the red arrows line up. The brush roll is now disengaged and your Kirby will operate as a straight suction cleaner. By attaching the optional hard floor pad, you can dust bare floors with your Kirby in the straight suction mode. 
Before installing the hard floor pad, unplug the power cord from the wall outlet and make sure the motor and nozzle brush have stopped. Make sure the nozzle is set to its highest setting. Attach the hard floor pad onto the nozzle opening using the spring clips on the plate. Plug the G6 in, make sure tech drive is in neutral, and turn the power on. Then lower the power nozzle until the bristles touch the floor. To remove the hard surface pad, press the toe touch control bottom pedal to raise the nozzle. Then step on the shoulder of the hard floor pad as you tip the G6 to the side. Besides being a remarkable upright cleaner, the G6 can easily be converted into a portable cleaner for things like mattresses or carpeted stairs. To reduce risk of injury in the portable mode, place tech drive in neutral and keep hair away from the rotating brush inside the nozzle. To convert your G6 to a portable cleaner, make sure the Kirby is turned off and unplugged. Release the outer permanent bag top by pressing the bag release button. Remove the power cord from the upright handle. Push the release button located at the base of the handle and pull the handle straight up and out of the slot. Then push the portable handle into the same slot and insert the bag latch tab into the slot on the portable handle. On carpeted stairs, simply roll the cleaner back and forth so the brush roll agitates the carpeting and loosens the dirt. Cleaning soft mattress surfaces is done the same as carpeted surfaces. Your Kirby should be set up as a portable cleaner. Make sure tech drive is disengaged and turn the Kirby on. Lower the power nozzle all the way down. Engage tech drive and begin vacuuming. For delicate mattresses, turn the belt lifter to the left or counterclockwise until the red arrows line up and you can use your Kirby as a straight suction cleaner. Your G6 comes with a wide variety of attachments for added versatility. In this section, we'll discuss removing the power nozzle to convert to a canister cleaner, using the duster brush, the upholstery nozzle, extension tubes, the suction control grip, the wall and ceiling brush, the crevice tool, the surface nozzle, and the massage cup. We'll also cover using your G6 as a blower unit and using the portable sprayer and portable shampooer. When using different cleaning attachments, the attachment hose is connected to the front of the cleaner in place of the power nozzle. The attachment hose may be used in either the upright or portable configuration. To install the attachment hose, raise the nozzle. Place tech drive in neutral and turn the power off. Unplug the Kirby from the wall outlet. Raise the headlight hood and turn the belt lifter to the left or counterclockwise until it stops and the red arrows line up. Unlock the power nozzle and lift it off the Kirby. In normal operation, friction between the belt and metal motor shaft may cause the metal motor shaft to be extremely hot to the touch. At the connector end of the attachment hose, you'll notice two hook-shaped lugs. Hook the lugs over the attaching bar, then push the opening of the hose up against the Kirby and lock it into place. Then lower the headlight hood. With the attachment hose in place, the G6 will automatically adjust to high-speed hose operation. To attach tools to the hose, push lightly while twisting the tool onto the hose. The duster brush may be connected to the attachment hose or the extension tubes to remove dust from any surface, including contoured or irregular surfaces. The upholstery nozzle is used for cleaning upholstered furniture, carpeted steps, clothing, and the inside of cars. A suction relief upholstery panel is available for use on drapes and delicate upholstery. Insert the lip of the upholstery tool under the two tabs at the front of the panel. You're now ready to clean more delicate surfaces. One or two extension tubes can be attached to the end of the hose to extend your reach and efficiently use various attachments. 
the suction control grip features a valve to control the amount of suction. Simply slide the valve control back and forth until the desired level of suction is reached. The suction control grip can be used with the attachment hose between extension tubes or it can easily be moved to the end of the tubes giving your brush attachments a different angle with which to clean. Attach the wall and ceiling brush to the suction control grip to clean walls, ceilings, and other surfaces. By rotating the brush, you can clean hard to reach places like high bookshelves. The crevice tool with a removable brush cleans dirt from tight places and carpet edges. Remove the brush and the crevice tool can be used for cleaning cracks, crevices, corners, grooves, and narrow openings. The surface nozzle may be used on bare floors or for surface cleaning carpets and under low furniture. Rubber wheels on the nozzle allow it to glide silently on the surface of hard floors without scratching. Used with the attachment hose, the massage cup provides an invigorating skin or scalp massage. Your G6 can also be used as a blower in either the upright or portable configuration. Raise the power nozzle. Place tech drive in neutral and turn the power off. Unplug the Kirby from the wall outlet. Raise the headlight hood and turn the belt lifter to the left until the red arrows line up. Unlock the power nozzle and remove it from the Kirby. Then fasten the air intake guard onto the attaching bar and lock it into place. Lower the headlight hood. Remove the mini emptor and release the top of the bag assembly. To attach the blower hose, line up the indicator line on the large end of the hose with the indicator line on the metal exhaust port. Twist the hose connector to the right to lock it in place. By attaching the inflator deflator tool to the attachment hose, you can inflate toys, air mattresses, or other similar low pressure inflatable items. To deflate items, take the blower hose off the G6. Clip the bag into place and attach the mini emptor. Lift the headlight hood. Remove the air intake guard. And connect the attachment hose to the front of the Kirby. You may now use your Kirby to deflate items. Or clean tight areas such as computer keyboards or audio video equipment. The portable sprayer is used only in the blower mode. It's an excellent tool to apply many different types of water-based liquids to any type of surface. Never use oil or solvent-based paint of any kind in the portable sprayer. The motor is open to the spray and could ignite flammable and volatile paint solvents. Also note that the portable sprayer has not been tested or certified for use by Canadian Standards Association. To set up the portable sprayer, unscrew the jar and fill three quarters full with any non-flammable liquid. If the sprayer must be tilted during use, less solution should be used to avoid large droplets in the spray. Screw the jar and portable sprayer tightly together. Make sure your Kirby is set up as a blower unit. The air intake guard should be on the front of the unit and the attachment hose should be connected to the exhaust port. Connect the sprayer to the attachment hose. Turn the Kirby on and squeeze the trigger, spraying your non-flammable solution. With the nozzle pointed away from you, adjust the spray by turning the spray adjustment control on the trigger. Use slow, sweeping motions to spray the desired area with solution. Always squeeze the trigger fully to permit maximum flow and spray control. Immediately after use, empty the jar and wash with warm, soapy water. The portable sprayer dip tube should also be removed and washed. Remove the nozzle jet by pressing the two latches on the front and pulling it out. Now the inside of the sprayer and the nozzle jet can be cleaned. When dry, return the nozzle jet to the front of the sprayer. Reassemble the rest of the sprayer so none of the parts will be lost. Never clean the portable sprayer with flammable cleaning fluids. The motor is open to the spray and could ignite flammable and volatile solvents. The portable shampooer is also used in the blower mode only 
and is designed for fast, easy cleaning of carpeted stairways and areas that are difficult to reach with a carpet shampoo system. The portable shampooer is not recommended for use on upholstery or delicate fabrics such as silk, brocade, or velvet. If in doubt, try a test patch. Let the patch dry and check it before you shampoo further. To set up the portable shampooer, attach the shampooer cap to the end of the portable sprayer. Fill the jar with water to the water line. Then add Kirby carpet shampoo to the shampoo line. Use only Kirby carpet shampoo for best results. Screw the jar and portable sprayer tightly together. Connect the sprayer to the attachment hose and make certain your Kirby is set up as a blower. The attachment hose should be connected to the air exhaust port and the air intake guard should be installed on the front of the unit. Turn the Kirby on and pull the trigger to spray suds onto the surface being clean. Adjust the portable sprayer for proper suds volume by turning the spray adjustment control located on the trigger. Work suds into the surface with a soft brush or sponge until they disappear. Allow the surface to dry completely and vacuum to remove the dry residue, which contains debris and loosened dirt. To purchase additional Kirby carpet shampoo, contact your local Kirby distributor. Or if distance or convenience is a factor, call Kirby Direct at 1-800-437-7170. Part 4 explains the floor care system. The carpet shampoo system was designed to help you shampoo, fluff, and otherwise maintain carpeting. It contains the shampoo system nozzle, tray assembly, system hose, brush roll, tank, and a bottle of Kirby carpet shampoo. Before shampooing, vacuum the carpeted area thoroughly to remove any loose dirt. Then unplug the Kirby. Make sure the nozzle is at its highest setting. Turn the belt lifter to the left or counterclockwise until the red arrows line up. Push the accessory lock to the left and remove the nozzle. Remove the mini emptor and release the top of the bag assembly. Pull the shampooer belt up away from the brush. Make sure the green arrows on the shampoo system nozzle are lined up. Slide the carpet shampoo system nozzle onto the shampoo tray. Turn the belt lifter to the left until the red arrows line up. The belt lifter hook will catch and stretch the belt. Slide the nozzle tray assembly toward the Kirby and place the hooks on the bottom rear of the nozzle onto the attaching bar. Push the nozzle up against the Kirby and lock the nozzle in place. Turn the belt lifter to the right until the green arrows line up and lower the headlight hood. The shampoo system tank should be filled or emptied over a sink in case of spillage. Unscrew the large cup from the top of the tank. With the tank level, fill to the first line for small rooms, the second line for medium-sized rooms, or the third line for large rooms. Fill with warm water, not hot. Then add Kirby carpet shampoo. Use one cupful for small rooms, two cupfuls for medium-sized rooms, and three cupfuls for large rooms. Note that using more than the appropriate number of cupfuls could cause over-foaming. Replace the large cup into the opening on the top of the tank. One tankful of this solution should clean an area about 9 by 12 feet. Larger carpets may require emptying the tray and refilling the tank. To attach the tank, match up the lines on the tank and the exhaust port. Slide the tank down and rotate it toward the Kirby. Lower the nozzle to its lowest setting. The hose has a light and a dark end. Insert the dark end firmly into the tray hole. Then attach the light end to the tank. To control the amount of suds, turn the suds control valve right or clockwise for more suds and left or counterclockwise for less suds. Turning the valve to the off position will stop the flow of suds completely. Start with a suds control valve on. 
plug the Kirby into the wall outlet. Turn the Kirby on and engage tech drive. Suds flow should begin immediately. As you move the Kirby forward, foam will be released and the brush will work it into the carpet. Pulling the G6 back in the same path should dispense suds for the full width of the tray. If not, move the G6 more slowly or clean the shampoo tank filter if necessary. Also, to shampoo along edges, make sure the tank is on the opposite side of the edge being cleaned. Once the surface being cleaned has been covered with a blanket of foam, wait about 10 minutes. Then turn the suds control valve off and go over the entire area again. After allowing the surface to dry completely, attach the power nozzle and vacuum the dried suds residue. Note that the Kirby shampoo system, when used with Kirby carpet shampoo according to directions, has been tested safe on treated carpeting and will not affect stain resistant properties. To help you get the most out of your Kirby carpet shampoo system, Kirby offers a multi-purpose spot remover and shampoo pretreatment for use on stubborn spots and heavy traffic areas. For stubborn spots, use Kirby multi-purpose spot remover prior to shampooing. Just apply to the spot, blot once, then shampoo over the entire area. For heavily soiled areas such as entryways, walkways, and traffic patterns, use Kirby shampoo pretreatment prior to shampooing. Simply apply shampoo pretreatment five minutes before shampooing. Then shampoo over the entire area. You can purchase shampoo, spot remover, and shampoo pretreatment through your local Kirby distributor. Or if distance or convenience is a factor, call Kirby Direct at 1-800-437-7170. To clean the carpet shampoo system, raise the nozzle and unplug the Kirby from the wall outlet. Pull the hose from the shampoo tray. Raise the headlight hood. Turn the belt lifter to the left until the red arrows line up. Release the nozzle tray assembly and carry it to the sink. Then turn the belt lifter to the right until the green arrows line up. Pull the tray and nozzle apart. Disconnect the shield by gently pulling out the ends of the tray just behind the brush roll. Remove the brush roll by simultaneously pushing on both ends of the tray just behind the brush roll. Rinse the tray, rinse the shield, and finally rinse the brush. Then remove any lint from the brush tufts. Shake excess water from the brush roll by brushing your hand over the bristles. Rinse the nozzle. Finally, dry all parts with a towel. Snap the brush back into place. The brass end goes into the larger opening. Reattach the shield. Then reattach the nozzle to the tray assembly. Make sure the green arrows on the nozzle line up to avoid stretching the belt during storage. Then pull off the light gray end of the hose and remove the shampoo tank. To clean the tank, remove the sponge filter and the cup. Rinse both thoroughly with cold water. Rinse the hose. Pour out the remaining carpet shampoo solution and rinse the shampoo tank. Rinse the sud screen on the bottom of the tank. When clean and dry, replace them to their original positions. To replace the carpet shampoo system nozzle belt, turn the belt lifter until the green arrows line up. Lift the nozzle off the tray assembly. Then rotate the tray shield away from the brush push down on both ends of the brush simultaneously and the brush will snap out. Remove the old belt and place a new Kirby approved belt in the center of the brush. Both brush roll ends have a narrow side and a wide side. Make sure the narrow side is facing up. 
place the brush roll on the carpet with the brass end to your left. Place the tray over the brush roll and snap the brush roll into place. Close the shield and pull the belt up. Replace the nozzle with the belt lifter facing the tray. Turn the belt lifter to the left until the red arrows line up. The belt should not be stretched for an extended period, so make sure the green arrows on the belt lifter line up before storage. Your G6 can be used as an effective floor care system for cleaning, waxing, or buffing a variety of hard surface floors. To clean hard surface floors, make sure your Kirby is off and unplugged. Raise the headlight hood. To disengage the brush roll, turn the belt lifter to the left until the red arrows line up. Make sure the nozzle is set to its highest setting. Attach the hard floor pad and plug the Kirby in. Make sure tech drive is in neutral and turn the Kirby on. Lower the power nozzle until the brushes contact the floor and you're ready to clean any hard surface floor. Heavily soiled floors may need additional cleaning, such as damp mopping. Your Kirby can also be used to wax hard surface floors. But before applying wax, first attach the buffer nozzle to the G6. Make sure the nozzle is at its highest setting. Unplug the Kirby from the wall outlet. Remove the power nozzle. Then drop the buffer nozzle onto the floor buffer brush. Push the belt up against the brush roll with your finger. While holding the belt in place, turn the belt lifter to the left or counterclockwise until the red arrows line up. The belt lifter hook will catch the belt and stretch it upward into the nozzle. Attach the nozzle. Turn the belt lifter to the right or clockwise until the green arrows line up. Lower the headlight hood. Make sure tech drive is in neutral by stepping on the end side of the power assist pedal. Your Kirby is now ready for use as a buffer. To wax hard floors, assemble the roller waxer applicator by pushing the two halves together until the spring-loaded pin clicks into place. Remove the wax roller from the canister. Insert the applicator into the open end of the wax roller. Pull the roller bag off the wax roller and save the packing bag. Use the roller to apply a small amount of Kirby Miracle Wax. It's not necessary to cover the entire floor completely. To remove the wax roller from the handle, push the wax roller into the packing bag. Grasp both the packing bag and roller firmly and pull the roller off the bar. Seal the bag to prevent premature drying and store in a safe place away from kids and pets. For easier storage, you can disconnect the roller handle by pressing down the spring-loaded pin and pulling the two ends apart. Then spread the wax with the floor buffer. First, make sure tech drive is in neutral. Before you turn the Kirby on, grasp it firmly by the handle. The floor buffer tends to move forward when the unit is on and the brush is in contact with the floor. Turn the Kirby on. Lower the brush as far as the toe touch control will allow. To spread the wax, move the Kirby over the floor as though you were cleaning a carpet using slow, steady strokes. Wait five minutes. When dry, buff to a bright sheen. For marble floors, use the same procedures, but buff immediately, avoiding any drying time. Hard floors may be rebuffed any time it's necessary. Waxing is not necessary every time you buff. Apply additional wax when rebuffing does not produce desired results. Also, do not stand the Kirby on end for polishing. Make sure tech drive is in neutral for polishing and do not use Kirby Miracle Wax on rubber or asphalt tiles. Your G6 floor buffer can also be used as a carpet fluffer to reset the nap on a matted down carpet. 
before placing the Kirby on the carpet, make sure Tech Drive is in neutral and the nozzle is all the way up. Then place the cleaner on the carpet. Holding onto the handle firmly, start the G6 and lower the nozzle one notch at a time until the brushes contact the carpet. Engage Tech Drive Power Assist and push the G6 back and forth over the carpet. Lowering the brush too far may cause certain carpet types to fuzz. For that reason, use of the carpet fluffer is not recommended for delicate carpets. The turbo accessory system can be used for a wide variety of household jobs. It's a sander, a buffing unit, a scouring unit, and a massage unit. When using the turbo accessory system as a sander, it's always advisable to use safety glasses. The Kirby should be in the canister mode. To begin, unsnap the sander dust shroud at the rear of the tool and lift it off. Flip up the levers on the side of the turbo accessory to open the clamps. Select the correct grade of sandpaper needed for the job. Fine paper for a smooth finish or coarse paper to clean rough surfaces or remove paint. Slide the sheet into the front clamp and lock the clamp lever. Tightly wrap the paper around the bottom of the turbo accessory and tuck the end into the rear clamp. Then lock the rear clamp. With the turbo accessory on a level surface, wrap the dust shroud around the sander with the opening to the rear and snap it shut. Be sure no metal objects such as tacks or nails are sticking up from the surface to be sanded. They could damage the turbo accessory or cause sparks which could ignite dust. Insert the attachment hose into the end of the turbo accessory. Turn the Kirby on. Press the on button on top of the sander and grip the sander at the front and rear. While applying light pressure, move the sander over the surface slowly, allowing it to do the work. Don't force it or lean heavily on it. That will only slow it down and the tool works best at high speeds. Replace the disposable filter bag after extended sanding because the dust is fine and tends to plug the pores of the bag. To use the turbo accessory as a polisher, attach the synthetic lamb's wool pad using the same procedure as attaching sandpaper. Use it for polishing hard waxed surfaces such as tabletops, paneling, and large flat surfaces. The dust shroud is not used when polishing. Attach the web nylon scouring pad using the same procedure as attaching sandpaper. The turbo accessory now becomes a scouring tool. Use it for scouring hard surfaces. The dust shroud is not used with the scouring pad. For safety reasons, do not turbo scour painted surfaces. The turbo accessory massage unit is intended for use where massage is desired or medically recommended. To use the orbital massage unit, attach the soft vinyl pad to the turbo accessory using the same procedure as attaching sandpaper, but the dust shroud is not necessary. Attach the suction control grip to the hose and then attach the tool. Start the G6 and just hit the on switch for a relaxing massage. To adjust the level of vibration, use the suction control. Do not use the orbital massager on swollen or inflamed areas, legs with varicose veins, areas where there are skin eruptions, unexplained calf pains, or anesthetic skin areas, unless first approved by your doctor. In addition, children must be supervised when using the massager. When connected to the attachment hose, the zip brush can be used for a wide variety of cleaning jobs, including carpeted steps, upholstery, or in the car. For best results, avoid pressing down heavily on the zip brush. Allow the brush to rotate at maximum speed by gently moving it side to side on the surface being cleaned. For safety's sake, do not insert fingers into the revolving brush area or push the release button while the brush is in motion. Keep the brush flat against the surface being cleaned. The brush can throw particles outward also, avoid using the zip brush on delicate fabrics. To clean the zip brush, remove it from the hose. 
Then use the hose to clean any lint from the brush. Press the button on the front of the brush to release the outer brush ring. Lift the center brush air turbine out of the tool and remove any particles or lint. Remove any particles left in the tool cavity. Place the brush air turbine back into the tool and turn it until the tabs drop into the slots. Hook the tab on the rear of the ring brush into the small opening of the tool and snap it back into place. Your G6 is a highly sophisticated home care system. As with most modern appliances, it requires a modest degree of routine maintenance to keep it operating efficiently. This section presents a few maintenance tips on things such as changing the power nozzle belt, adjusting the brush roll for optimum performance, light bulb replacement, and electrical cord replacement. After extended use, the power nozzle belt on your G6 may become stretched or worn, causing the belt to slip. If this condition exists, simply replace the belt with a new Kirby-approved belt. To change the belt, remove the nozzle from the Kirby. Then release the belt tension by turning the belt lifter to the right or clockwise until the green arrows line up. Unlock the rug plate by unhooking the two latches on the rear of the nozzle. Note if there are one, two, or three notches exposed on the end of the brush roll. Lift out the belt and brush roll. Slide off the old belt and replace it with a new Kirby belt. Place the belt and brush roll back into the nozzle. Make sure the adjustment setting, one, two, or three notches, is the same as when the brush was removed. Then center the belt on the brush. Replace the rug plate and then latch the two locks that hold it in place. Turn the belt lifter to the left or counterclockwise until the red arrows line up. This will stretch the belt inside the nozzle. Now you're ready to reattach the power nozzle and re-engage the belt. Over time, the bristles on the brush roll will wear. You will then need to adjust the brush roll height. First, remove the power nozzle from the Kirby by turning the belt lifter to the left until the red arrows line up. Then, release the belt tension by turning the belt lifter back to the right or clockwise until the green arrows line up. Unlock the two latches on the rear of the power nozzle to remove the rug plate. Note if there are one, two, or three notches exposed on the ends of the brush roll. If the brush roll was already set to three notches, you will need to replace the brush roll. To adjust, lift the brush out of the nozzle. Rotate both ends to the desired setting. Place the brush back into the nozzle, making sure both ends are set to the same number of notches. Replace the rug plate by placing it on the front of the bumper first and then pulling it over the bumper on the rear of the power nozzle. Secure the two rug plate latches. Then turn the belt lifter to the left or counterclockwise until the red arrows line up. The nozzle can now be attached to the Kirby. If the light bulb on your Kirby burns out, you may wish to contact your authorized Kirby distributor for replacement. If you prefer to install a new light bulb yourself, turn off the Kirby and unplug it from the wall outlet. Raise the headlight hood. Locate the horizontal tab in the center. Insert a flat screwdriver in the tab and pop the lens off. Lower the headlight hood. Gently wiggle the light bulb until it loosens and pull it out of the socket. Gently push a new light bulb into the opening. With both notches on the rear of the lens facing up, insert the lens into the lens opening and gently fit it in place. A functional electrical cord is essential for the safe operation of your Kirby. Be careful not to run over the cord and always unplug your unit by grasping the plug rather than yanking on the cord. If the electrical cord connecting your Kirby to the outlet becomes cut or frayed, do not use the unit. 
contact your authorized Kirby service center immediately for replacement. If the motor doesn't run when you turn your Kirby on, make sure the power cord is plugged in. Check your breaker or fuse box to make sure the outlet has power. Look for breaks in the power cord insulation. If the cord is damaged, replace it with a genuine Kirby power cord. Do not attempt to repair damaged electrical cords. Make sure all accessories and other attachments are properly mounted on the front. Also, the Kirby will not operate unless a bag assembly, attachment hose, or shampoo tank is properly attached to the exhaust port. Any of these must firmly click into place for the Kirby to operate. If your Kirby isn't picking up dirt or lint from your carpeting, make sure the nozzle height is adjusted properly. Lower the nozzle until you hear a change in motor tone. Then lower it one more notch. Improper height adjustment will affect airflow. Check the bag to see if it's full. If it is, change it. If it's still not picking up dirt and lint, the brush roll may need to be adjusted to a different height. If the brush roll is not turning freely, the belt may be slipping, broken, or not on the motor pulley. Replace the belt with a new Kirby belt. Or another cure might be to replace the old brush roll with a new one. The exciting versatility of a complete home care system. The durability of aluminum. The simplicity of easy adjustments and accessories. The reliability of an international company known for its quality products. Your G6 puts it all at your fingertips. Everything you need to clean practically every surface, every corner, every room in your home. Thank you for watching this video, and we hope that years from now, you're still enjoying how your Kirby G6 keeps on working for you.